Good morning. Um, welcome to live case number 18. Um, this is the Tabra case. Uh, my name is Alan Young. I'm together with uh, Dr. James Flaherty and Professor Kim. Um, we're going to have a transmission from Severance Hospital um, with the operator Myungki Hong and Youngkook Ko. Um, Myungki, are you online? Good morning, Myungki. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Hi, morning. Alan here. Hi, good morning. Thanks um, for the uh, introduction. Uh, the, uh, it is an honor to have uh, the uh, opportunity to present uh, the, our cases, the uh, top cases in our hospital. Before the uh, start of the case, let me introduce our team. Actually, this is uh, the, our hybrid room, which was located in the operation room. It's a huge size of it. My right side is uh, the Everybody knows my colleague, Professor Ko, is our one team. The next one is uh, uh, pro, uh, Dr. Kim, he's uh, the interventional fellow. Uh, additionally, we have a very, very fantastic uh, heart team, anesthesiologist, uh, and the Professor Shim. She's uh, the uh, imaging interventional specialist and the nurses. Okay, okay Professor Ko. Um, you, so can I just interrupt for a second? So I forgot to introduce all our panelists, so I can just okay, mention it real course. quick, sorry. Uh, Dr. Choi, Dr. Hu, Dr. Her, Dr. Jin, Dr. Uh, Ku, Dr. Kwan, Dr. Wojciechowski, uh, and Dr. Wong. Thank you. Okay, good morning. I'm Yang Ko. I'd like to introduce our case. Next slide, please. Now, this is an uh, 88-year-old female patient. Uh, uh, her, um, she is uh, 157 centimeter tall and her body weight is uh, 48 kilometer, uh, kilogram. Uh, sorry. Um, so she has uh, elderly patients with a uh, relatively short body stature, but she is uh, still physically active. So she doesn't run a marathon, but uh, <laughs> she works as a um, senior model, so which can be very stressful. So she came, she came to hospital to aggravate uh, dyspnea, uh, and she has uh, several comorbidities and hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. And she had uh, uh, non uh, ST segment elevation in my uh, back in uh, 2014, and at the time she was treated with PCI uh, at LAD, and uh, also uh, on. A uh, recent uh, CT follow-up, she showed three vessel disease, and we're going to check that uh, with the angiogram. And uh, we found uh, an echocardiogram, severe AS. Um, STS score is 4.1, so uh, STS score is an uh, intermediate risk patient. Next slide. So this is the chest X-ray and ECG. Um, she shows uh, cardiomegaly on chest X-ray, and on ECG we see poor R progression in precordial lead, but the uh, QRS complex is narrow. Next slide, sinus rhythm. And this is the baseline uh, transthoracic echo. Um, the um, cis, uh, aortic valve area is 0 0.8, and uh, systolic and mean systolic pressure gradient is 69 and 38 millimercury. Uh, and she had also mild AR. Uh, LB function uh, is well preserved. The ejection fraction is 61, uh, 61 despite of the uh, uh, old um, MI event. And next slide. This is the uh, CT uh, findings. The annulus uh, has diameter uh, mean and max diameters of uh, 18 and 21. So and uh, annulus area 307 area derived diameter uh, 19.8 and uh, perimeter 63. Uh, sinus Faisalva has dimension of uh, greater than uh, 30 millimeters and ST uh, junction diameter is 25. Next. So relatively small uh, annulus, but uh, large enough uh, SOV. The left coronary artery uh, height is 14 millimeter, right side, 
uh, the height of the right coronary artery is 17. Uh, and uh, the calcification, uh, at least on CT scan, uh, doesn't seem to be uh, severe. Uh, next slide. This is the uh, aortic root angulation, 53. So not uh, uh, horizontal, not that severe horizontal uh, aortic root uh, on CT scan. Next slide. And this is the uh, iliofemoral uh, excess. Uh, uh, there is some calcification on the right side of the iliac artery and uh, distal aorta, but uh, the, uh, the diameter uh, of the uh, uh, both iliac arteries over uh, six uh, millimeters. So I think uh, uh, large enough to accommodate the uh, schist for the tablet delivery. Next slide. And this is the um, coronary uh, artery reconstructed image. Uh, uh, on the right side, the, uh, there was seen a moderate stenosis uh, of the uh, right coronary artery. And uh, um, LAD stent with stenosis was suspected. And also, circumflex seemed to be uh, severely uh, narrowed. Next slide. So, uh, in summary, uh, this patient is um, SDS score wise intermediate risk and uh, CVIS with multiple comorbidities. Uh, uh, on CT scan, she seems to have three vessel disease. Uh, she has a uh, uh, small annular size, so diameter is uh, uh, smaller than 20 millimeters, around 19.8 millimeter, perimeter 63. So uh, our plan is. Um, Cover instead of uh, surgery because of her uh, old age. Uh, so, and we will do a cover on the monitored anesthetic care, and we will use intracardiac echo to monitor uh, the procedure and to evaluate uh, the result. And we'll do a coronary angiogram. Next slide. So, uh, according to the uh, measurement based on the CT scan, so in Korea we have three uh, valves are available. So one is Evolute uh, valve. So the CT-based uh, annular size just between uh, 23 and 26 millimeter valve. So the borderline, uh, we can use, uh, we can either of one. Uh, for the uh, 26 millimeter valve, we will have oversizing 16%. And for the 26 millimeter valve, we'll have 30% uh, uh, oversizing. Uh, a little bit overstretched. Next slide. So sapiens three, uh, 20 millimeter ball, uh, valve uh, will be, uh, you know, fit in this patient. Next. And acute neo uh, covers only uh, annular size larger than 21. So uh, this patient will be outside of the IFU. Next slide. So, uh, so far our presentation, so uh, according to the basement, uh, baseline the, uh, CT and echocardiogram, we decided to use uh, Evolo 23 millimeter valve. So, what's your opinion? Great, thank you for your presentation. Maybe you can open for discussion a little bit. What do people think for this small annulus? What, I think, what valve would you choose? I think that's the best choice. A small annulus and large sinuses, you'll get a nice hemodynamic result. We're very reluctant to use the Sapien 20 leads to higher gradients. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a perfect choice for this case. Um, on the echocardiogram, the septum seems a little thick. Uh, is there any sort of evidence of little um, asymmetric hypertrophy um, Sheen, on a CT or on a better echo? Professor Shin, please. I can hear the, um, the professor there. Uh, Sorry, mic just here. Professor. Professor. Shim Zing, Shim Zing, mic just here. Head just here. So there is some uh, basal septal hypertrophy. But, not severe. Yeah, but not severe. Okay. Yeah, we oh, really want to. You want to make sure there's no significant SAM. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, oh, you can no, get no. suicide left ventricle if there's thick basal septum and, and systolic anterior motion. So it's important to look for before. Yeah, and also Treating make the sure the valve position may get changed by the septum if the, if the membranous septum is short type of thing, for example. Anybody oh, else she, would use the yeah, 20? Yeah. Mm, sorry, she, go ahead. Uh, she has a previous uh, myocardial infarction, probably the LAD disease, because she has a 
Q wave in enterolite. So in this case, is there any higher chance than usual for the developing LBBB? Um, what do you think, um, Myung-Ki? Agreed. Can you hear Agreed. Uh, especially we uh, use uh, the Evolut, there is a chance of the LBBB. Yeah. I don't and think the old, if there's an old anterior MI, I don't think it has a bearing on the risk of left bundle for the TAVR. That's it. That's it. And that, uh, show so, us, show the, the final result. So we, we can choose either 20, 23 millimeter VAB or Evolut or 26 millimeter Evolut. So uh, I think 30% uh, oversizing, a little bit too overstretched. Yeah. I think that can cause uh, AV conduction uh, disturbance. So what do you think, Professor Kim? What, do you, what valve would you choose and um, risk of uh, left bundle branch block or heart block? Yeah, uh, annular size is very uh, ambiguous. That's, uh, it's very difficult to uh, select uh, bell type. I think Evolute 23 is the, the uh, optimal uh, uh, choice. And have you ever ha had the chance to measure the membrane septum? The patient body size is very small. There's, I think the distance between analysts and the AV node is very narrow. Mm -hmm. Even though we implant uh, just the 16% oversized avalut, it is a little bit small, but it may have a chance to do a conduction delay. How long is membrane septum length? Before the, uh, I got the, the uh, length of the uh, membrane septum, the, uh, actually, this is uh, the, uh, some typical cases of the elderly female patient. Actually, this kind of the patient is uh, the composed of the one third of uh, the, our procedure, small mm -hmm. size of female. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, in this kind of cases, if we de uh, deploy the, the sapien valve, actually the, the final uh, valve area is uh, quite smaller. It's a uh, more final LB area is uh, during a follow 1.0 or 1.5, 1, that's it. So in this kind of cases, we uh, uh, preferable, prefer the more the self-expandable stand. So we used to measure these uh, septal, the, the uh, member of septal uh, lengths, but it varies very uh, largely. So from uh, from uh, company to company, and even when we measure, it's very variable and it's very confusing. So uh, we, uh, these days, we do not measure the uh, member septum length uh, routinely. The other point is age. She's already 88 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. Thus, I expect the life expectancy would be about five years. Thus, even though uh, the artificial is not satisfactory when we use Sapien, Sapien may be a kind of choice yeah. for this patient. Yeah, we, you know, this valve is quite small. This annulus is quite small. So normally, if it's, you know, a little bit more than, you know, 300, 320, we can sort of uh, use a 23 downsize a little bit, you know. But for her, I think if you put a 20, it will be fine for her in her age group. Um, obviously, much younger, you know, but 88 mm -hmm. is probably okay. sufficient. But, you know, I, if you have a choice, I think still probably Evolute 23 would be reasonable, but maybe look at the coronaries. Can we? Did you take yeah. a coronary okay. angiogram yeah. already? Okay. Because if there's lots okay. of coronary disease, right. it may be so access like, issue down the road type of thing. So, uh, uh, we would like to uh, show what I've done. So this is this is the uh, we uh, inserted pacemaker, temporary pacemaker through the right uh, internal jugular vein. Next, and we. Uh, this is the baseline angiogram. Uh, we see here the patent uh, um, the LAD stent, uh, no significant stenos stenosis. However, uh, at the oh. um, ostium of the left coronary artery, the left main oh. shows significant stenosis. So. Hmm. Next. As you see can that. see here, maybe 60%. Uh, Next. Next. Hmm. Just a little bit more than 60. Hmm. So, <laughs> So I think the issue is the, the left main. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we need to fix this. Next. And the right coronary shows no significant okay. uh, stenosis. So uh, I think it is necessary to treat the left main. So we decided implant the stent. Next. So we performed direct stenting. This is Zion's 
4 millimeter by uh, 18. And we try to uh, uh, position the stent not to, you know, uh, protrude out of the uh, left coronary artery too much. Next. Okay, next. Next. Okay, next. Yeah, we implant a stent and then we uh, further dilated the balloon with the uh, non compliant balloon. Next. Four. Four. Next. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, this is the result of the uh, stenting. So uh, the left coronary artery, the left main is uh, sufficiently uh, dilated. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the, what I've done so far. This is uh, the, when you look at uh, the angiogram, the, the, there is uh, some uh, severe uh, coronary artery disease was a stented portion. So we have to uh, lead it to the, some access after the, the table procedure. However, the, uh, look at the, the uh, osteum was uh, the, when you, even though we try to the optimize uh, the stent, but the, there is uh, some chance of uh, a little bit the uh, stent protrusion. So in this kind of cases, when we use uh, the balloon expandable stent, there is uh, some chance of the crush of the stent. The, which was uh, located in the uh, left osteum. And uh, additionally, when you look at uh, the angiogram, there is uh, the uh, lesser curvature of uh, the ascending aorta. There is uh, some calcium. It means uh, if we deploy it to the, the uh, top of the valve, the uh, more upside to avoid uh, the uh, uh, induction ab abnormality, there is uh, some chance of the, the touch of the, the severe calcium in the uh, the ascending aorta. So, in this kind of case, uh, situation, still we prefer the, the self-expandable stand or valve. How do you think about the circle osteum? I think there is yes, also there is a some disease. But uh, as you said, the patient age is 88. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, quite enough for the maintain the disease severity, this condition with a medical treatment, as in the, as shown in the in the courage trial. And you're treating aortic stenosis, not angina. So I, I think that's the right yeah. mindset. But I do think that we should treat the left. We should, you know, just yeah. I agree with treating the left, left main because, because it looks kind of ugly there. You're not going to get back in. Yeah. But I also agree that a balloon expandable has dangers in a case like this. Um, but the evolute valve shouldn't touch that stent with those sinuses. And Thanks for the James yeah. your comment. So we already uh, inserted the pigtail into LV. Okay, so, we will uh, proceed uh, the procedure. Please continue the discussion about uh, uh, these cases uh, yeah. with you and the, the panelists. Sure. We will f concentrate uh, the procedure itself. I think, you know, with the evolute valve, uh, the coronary access will be well, a little bit more difficult, but well, obviously no. still very doable. So I would just say that just, uh, you know, if she's obviously close to your hospital, if there's any issue, there'll be... Um, pretty well, you know, let's say she developed angina and then you need to recatheter, it's still very doable. Um, just that if she has sort of an emergency going to somewhere else, sometimes the evolute valve people don't know how to access um, the coronary through that, especially there's a stent at the ostium too. So, so something to think about in terms of conveying to her afterwards. Um, May I ask what, what advantage uh, is with using the uh, intracardiac echo in this case? So I also wonder mm. how, how so, many operators yeah. use the, I uh, the routine. So the it, one we, which we, we didn't talk about is that I would have gone to the left side. We, we, we. Yes, that that was other option because <laughs> the the, the, the the iliac yeah. is calcified and it's bent there, 90, yeah, 90 yeah. degrees also, bent uh, and the I, left higher bifurcation on the right as well. Better. I don't like that usually. Yeah, but they got it up. Yeah. yeah, so it just, you know, you can force it, but sometimes you yeah. dissect I think the, the left area and, head and it's kind of very difficult to treat. Because the iliac bifurcation is actually a funny area. Even if you have, you know, cover stand and it, you may not completely cover it and you can still leave. So, so something that I, I try to avoid if possible. So in this case, we can see very small amount of the calcium, and uh, this is the 23 millimeter surface of the bubble with the minimal oversizing with the 16 percent. So, and I can see that the length to the membrane septum is over than the 10 millimeters. So, do you have any plan for the depth of the valve in this case, Dr. Hong or 
cool. Yeah. So, um, I think they're concentrating on kind of thing, but <laughs> this looks <laughs> like non yeah. Yeah. it looks like the so Evolute Pro, not the FX. We, we will yeah. do no, the no procedure on the you know right. three cost no view yet. projection. Uh, so this is elderly patient. Um, no, we will try to avoid uh, you know yeah. AV conduction disturbance. Sure. Yeah, uh, but uh, right. I think uh, um, we will not do uh, the implant. We will not uh, implant a valve to shallow. Okay. So this is your cut overlap view. This is a three, three cut uh, view. Three cut view. Mm, no, and then yeah. you go to the L to see the yeah. left. Okay. We initially select a three cut view, but finally, this is a almost three uh, overlap view. Test one more time. Okay. Regarding the usefulness of ice yeah. during TAVI, uh, I think uh, ice is not so helpful uh, regarding the, uh, considering the cost. But the uh, Severus team only persistently use ice, not the MC center. How about in America? For using ice for this? No. We use transthoracic. But some just use aerotography to see if there's leak after. Yeah, we, save. we just do MAC and then do a quick um, trans uh, thoracic echo afterwards. Yeah. Um, and there's, if there's any, you know, very rarely we use CEE to monitor anything anymore. Are we in there? Yeah. So the, the depth looks good on the non. Mm -hmm. And you're catching the left, which is good. Do you want to be a little higher, or do you, you think put, it's okay? You, you push a little on the wire to yeah. to get it up. Just a little, so have somebody push the a little side, tension yeah. on the wire. Yeah. A little bit higher, but the, I think it's that the, uh, maybe acceptable. It is, although it could be a little higher, especially on the left. A little deep, yeah. Right. But the, Let's swing over to the left side. Take a look how deep the left side is. So, Dr. Lin, so uh, how often you use uh, the <laughs> cut overlap view compared to the uh, three uh, the conventional uh, three cut view? Uh, usually, yeah. cut overlap view is a really harsh <laughs> angle, thus a severe audio caudal view. Thus, I always I use uh, just uh, uh, two thirds uh, cusp of lab view, which has a more favorable projection. Uh, there is no problem. Thus, I don't use 100% uh, cusp of lab view, just two thirds. Okay. The, during the, the uh, conversation of the, the uh, analyst, I heard that the uh, usefulness or value of the eyes, actually, we have experience of the eyes. The, uh, regarding to the, the eyes, the, I agree, it's uh, the, uh, expensive, but the, you know, in the past history, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the procedure of uh, the ASD or the, the other structural belt disease was uh, the, using a general anesthesia and the TEE. But nowadays, uh, this kind of the procedure was done all by the eyes guidance. And second one is, uh, let's think okay. about okay. The, the, when you buy a new brand new car, there is a, always have a, some navigator. So you think if you have a navigator in your car, I think you are more comfortable to uh, drive. Yeah. It's a similar. So even though the experience that the, Tavi operator is that the uh, I see is uh, not maybe it's uh, some too expensive. Agree. What, MK, MK, what kind of car are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Korean smart, car. Smart, smart car. <laughs> a little bit higher, so high like expensive. To, okay, yeah. sure. I will show you the uh, longitudinal view of the uh, LT valve, LT route. So, Dr. Shim. 
Do you see any parabolic leak on this projection? Okay. This is a long axis. So image quality is not yeah. so different from <laughs> TTE. That's the reason why I don't use eyes. It's not great for looking at aortic valve. It's pretty good for a tricuspid because it's close by. It's when it's that far away, just as you know, it's no different from the distance from the chest to the aortic valve. Well, the, the nice thing is, look at, look at, look the at the, the uh, short axis. You can see, you know, you know exactly where it looks. Yes, it we can easily see like the that. in the yeah. instant immediately after the procedure. So personally, I believe that the what is that the parabola leakage, what is the hemodynamic, or what is the severity. I do not believe uh, the angiogram or the hemodynamic. Mm. I more preferably, I look at directly how much it is on site. So it's always eyes. I think the image quality of eyes is comparable with that of the TE, um, definitely better than TTE image quality. So I think it is uh, one of the advantages of eyes. Yeah. MK, do, will you still do an aortogram or are you going to rely on the so. eyes only? It's still, we did it, everything, okay. autogram or hemodynamic. Mm. But, you know, in some cases, there is a severe, looks like uh, some moderate parabola leakage on the, the autogram, but I neglect it because I, I believe that the, the ice finding. Yeah, I think if you're comfortable with ice and your hospital will pay for it, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's more, may, of, a, it it's more of a cost issue. issue. Yeah, mainly the cost issue to us. Like we, we, right. I, I would, I would use that the cost yeah. issue for the eyes is uh, correct. I spend my extra budget on cerebral protection, but that's also a cost issue in some hospitals. Right. So but fortunately, in our country, ice is uh, not expensive. Reimbursed from the... the uh, and you can, you can, can you re reuse that probe? No, 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 no. It's a one time. No, one time. Oh, yeah. used to be yeah. send it back for resterization and charge you a little less money. But now Look at the, the hemodynamic infectious issue. So, do we have a conduction disorder after yeah. the top implantation? Yeah. Right, right, right. QR seems quite right. Why? Yeah, the QR has, wi has widened, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Could you show show the the, the uh, eyes images on the screening? You already seen. Please show uh, the yeah. NGO. So okay. <laughs> I like to see the NGO on the. LAO okay, see how it's a good chance. The left corner as well. Let's compare to the what is the, the uh, appearance of the parabola leakage in this patient. Okay. The eyes finding is that the severity of the parabola leakage trivial. is uh, almost a bit trivial or trivial. minimal. Yeah. Okay, look at the, the angiogram. What is the, the appearance? It's a good suggestion. I think the calcium is nearly in non, 16% uh, oversizing. I think uh, even in angio, part of the leakage may be minimal. Yeah. Is it reasonable to deny regurgitation when oh, ice is okay. free, but angio is a large regurgitation? I'm sorry, uh, with, NG, with uh, ice show no regurgitation, no, no regurgitation. but angio shows mm -hmm. yeah. regurgitation. <laughs> <laughs> he denied. Um, yeah, no, I think what we see is there's obviously that sometimes NGO with the long PR intervals, you can have a little bit of a sort of depends on how, if you, you shouldn't see moderate, you can see certainly see trace. There's, there's no issue. You know that, that the uh, cost issue for the eyes is uh, correct. But the, when we think about the, what is the, the result, final result of the TAVI, sometimes it's uh, wrong, sometimes it's true. But there is only two answers. Okay. There is uh, some borderline. You know, sometimes we have to decide what is the base or not to decide that. Of course, we consider the angiogram and hemodynamic. However, in such kind of the intermediate or borderline cases, the okay. use of the ice is a very, very helpful. Okay. It's not parallaxed. Okay. Mm. Oh. No. no leak. No. 
It is almost be comparable to the, the ice finding. But we don't see no, we don't see any significant probable leak. And your left left room. coronary flow is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if if you have a choice, you know, I mean, obviously, well, her age is fine. Is whether this is a little too deep, right? So mm -hmm. nowadays we like it to be a little bit higher, especially if uh, you know we want to achieve the best hemodynamics, but. But here, okay. obviously, it's good. But I, I'm just sort of saying, well, if you okay. have a choice, would you want it to be a little higher on right. what people think? Yeah, it's, it's a little low, but it's, it's a good result. Sometimes that happens. I agree. <laughs> we all know the procedure is a simple and short time. Yeah. This, uh, the important uh, factor to paravel leakage is uh, really a, a asymmetric classification. In this case, no classification, mm -hmm. no regurgitation, even oversizing is just 16%. That's a very important message. So if you estimate where the um, commissure is, and you know, in terms of getting into the coronary for the future, um, I think you know, sort of sometimes um, I, you know, I re keep a copy of it, meaning that you don't make sure that there's no parallax and have an idea where the left main comes out. So if you have to get access next time, you can quickly bring out that, that uh, NGO and be know how to get into and which cell that's near here. You have the calcium to help you a bit, but I, I generally try to sort of plan ahead if I need to get back to the coronary, where is the... So the, a little bit deep implantation helps you a little bit too because you don't have the commissure probably, even the tap of the commissure is probably a little lower than the coronary, even if it's lined up over there. Right, right. Correct, and uh, the practically uh, in this patient, uh, when I advance uh, the uh, test, uh, I feel uh, some resistance. So the uh, I feel that uh, uh, accommodate the uh, uh, commissural alignment is a little bit deeper, the difficult, my impression. And second one is that the uh, when you see that the procedure is at the uh, implantation angle is uh, not uh, uh, favorable. Is uh, the 53 is uh, the a little bit uh, the uh, uh, hard side to the uh, to use uh, the self expandable valve. That is the reason why I uh, uh, finished uh, this procedure, even though the, the low marginal valve are a little bit deeper. Okay, makes sense. Final uh, issue here. Final remaining issues. Uh, do we have to do uh, additional ballooning even though there is no leakage because the valve frame is not well expanded and asymmetric? Thus, we always check the, the valve frame expansion status from areo caudal to areo cranial. If there is a significant expansion in a certain angle, uh, we try to just correct the valve frame by additional gentle uh, post ballooning. How do you think about such kind of issue? There's okay. no leakage. That, that is a good point. And, uh, but uh, you know that the uh, asymmetric expansion, when we use uh, the, uh, the uh, self-expandable valve, is that the, we can easily see the, in the eyes. Don't do it. When you look at the short axis of the eyes, there is a circular shape. It means that the, there is a no, the valve of expansion is a quite reasonable. In some cases, the not circular, just the oval elliptical shape is uh, the, uh, maybe or uh, in need of uh, the sign of uh, additional balloon dilation. Yeah. The, uh, another practical tip is uh, this uh, procedure was uh, the RAO, but uh, you can maybe have uh, some clue in the extreme RAO. So let's show it in these cases. You can do so a spin and take a look. Yeah. Yeah, from a real cutter yeah, to a real cranial. Uh, 완전히 다 트루 트루로 넣고 포달 주지 말고 포달 주지 말고 포달 주지 말고 transmission is a little rainy can see it very well but actually actually I think in this very old lady with um, this kind of result no PR uh, and the implantation maybe a slightly a little bit low uh, with widened uh, as complex maybe I think uh, no further balloon dilatation would yeah. be accepted yeah. Yeah. I agree generally the I get out they showed the, the well expanded uh, the circling the fan it looks not too bad yes this is the extreme RAO view yeah no, it says, you, you have to maintain parallax angle, then we can exactly assess the expansion of the bare frame. Okay. I think it's a good result. I wouldn't touch it. 
considering AEG. You, you know that uh, the, yeah. the, uh, such kind of the uh, ide ideal the projection and the rotation yet maybe the hit the, the, our very expensive uh, screening. So also this the, the chunk sum. of calcium uh, above the, the left main, you know, when ballooning, you may risk some disruption of this calcium. So maybe it's better to yeah. no. to the right. yeah. I think the only last thing is make sure the uh, iliac bifurcation is okay. I know that you know mm -hmm. when you push it, you know sometimes it, it you know there's a disruption and you know you need to know because you have an inline sheet, right? Or you do you have yes, a yes. It, right? So all right. Is that, so we're gonna yeah. take an angiogram to yeah. check the uh, you know any uh, presence of any complication, vascular complication. So. So how long do you maintain the temporary pacing catheter? It's, uh, it, there is uh, something happen. One, one day, one day, 12 hours. You know, the, uh, our system is uh, the, I and the professor go involved in the, the uh, procedure itself. And the, and the uh, end of the, the procedure, the patient was uh, in the uh, CCU, is uh, uh, monitored and responsible for the attending physician, usually in the valve specialist. Mm. She huh? say, said to me, it's uh, only 12 hours. How is the situation in America? In a little bit deeper implantation yeah. of yeah. double bell and uh, uh, LBBB happened. Yeah. How do you maintain the temporary pacing catheter? Yeah, so in the past, we leave, we put, certainly put the uh, pacing wire in IJ so that you can, you know, keep them for 24 hours. But we're getting a little bit um, liberal. Nowadays, if after the end of the procedure, the left bundle is, is uh, stable, the PR integral is stable, we just take it out. Mm -hmm, sorry, you okay, okay, you see there is uh, some uh, blockage of the, the access side of the sheath, it's a, this is a, some common phenomenon. Uh, the reason why is a patient is a, the small yeah. size of the, so everything is a, so small. Okay, she has a little bit okay. small size of um, external iliac artery. So uh, when we remove the sheath, I think there will be um, the the common femoral arteries will be visible. But at least common iliac artery and the proximal external iliac artery seemed okay. So therefore, in this kind of the, the patient, is that the small size of device yeah. is a more better. What, what sheath is in your access uh, site on the right? Is that um, what is in uh, there now? Uh, no, in nine sheaths and the, the before that short sheaths. It's the fourteen French sheaths. Fourteen, 14 French. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably you know occlusive almost, right? So. Sure. So. The, in this kind of the patient with a small size of the body, all vessel, small annulus, the, we take care of the whole body, take care, not valve, including a valve. Yeah, so you know, we, we, were, we were concerned about the bifurcation, that's why you took the picture. Otherwise, you would have taken out the sheath first and then see, you know, yeah, yeah. how the whole, yeah, you know, the access side, right? Because otherwise, you can't really tell anything. It's a longer sheath, right. too, so right. it's so inclusive really in the external. Yeah. But we want to make sure that the bifurcation was not. Yeah, the bifurcation looks fine. Then I think you can forget about the access side for now. Yeah. Just take everything out, meaning, you know, per close and all that stuff, and then evaluate one more time. And to answer that earlier question, in our practice, if, if there's no heart block or transient heart block, we pull the pacemaker. Even in an evolute. So left bundle branch alone, we pretty much just end up the case. We take it out. Uh, you know, as some right. as we showed earlier in the meeting, some will pace the right atrium to look for Wankabach. Uh, and if there's yeah. no Wankabach in the right atrial pacing, the very low risk of developing heart block. In an 88 years old, it's a little hard, but sometimes because you know, her natural history probably can need a pacemaker at some point. So, uh, you know, something to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is uh, some okay, the, uh, blockage and uh, the uh, breathing. So, personally, I do not worry about that. No, the, my colleague is uh, the 20 years of the endovascular expert. He will fix it. 
very smoothly. Okay. Any All question? Right. Uh, no, great case, um, uh, Myungki, a, a very tough, uh, small, annulus old lady with the left main stenosis as well, just sort of discovered, you know, just before your procedure, so you know, expertly done, and um, great result. Hopefully she gets better and, um, you know, continue to, you know, do her modeling. She was doing an elderly modeling or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, so I wasn't quite sure what that was, but, uh, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you, okay. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you.